it's time for homeschooling. So if you haven't done it yet, get your children and um, get them all wrapped around the radio, wrapped around the television, uh, sit them down. Because we're going to learn about Pythagoras's theorem uh, in the company of Dr. Jamie Frost. Jamie, very good afternoon to you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Mike. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I'm slightly nervous because I haven't looked at Pythagoras' theorem for quite a, a few decades, I think I'd probably have to say. And um, I'm not entirely certain I remember what it is. <laughs> it's quite funny because I spoke to my dad yesterday and um, he, he hasn't done math since he was like 16. Right. And I was quite surprised he's forgotten all the rest of maths, but he actually was able to recite Pythagoras' theorem to me, which is quite really? remarkable. That is um, amazing. I'm not sure how he how to use it, but I'm, I just didn't know the side of my dad that he actually knew Pythagoras. From, so I was quite impressed by that. Well, he probably went to school at a time when he was taught by rote all of this stuff, you know, which I kind of did as well. But I mean, my son, uh, who was due to do his GCSEs uh, this year, I mean, some of the maths that he puts forward uh, uh, to me, I just can't even see. I just don't get it. I mean, you know, he, he's got a maths tutor because it's so complicated now. Um, I remember doing logarithms. I remember doing algebra. I remember doing geometry. Um, you know, but it was a very long time ago, and I don't really. It's not. I mean, I'm, I've always been okay at doing maths, maths in my head and that kind of thing. Um, but but it's not very sure. complicated. Sure. Um, well, I always think it's it's good to start um, when you learn a new mathematical concept, like where it's used. Yes. So Pythagoras is simply how we can relate the three sides of a right angle triangle. Right. And just in case your listeners aren't familiar with the idea of a right angle triangle, a right angle is just when you have, like, say, the corner of a table, a 90 degree angle. Yeah. So if I was to, say, draw a line from one corner of the, my table to the other, that would split it into uh, two right angle triangles. Um, and that line you've drawn across the table that would be uh, the longest side of each triangle. That would be uh, the hypotenuse. Yes. Well, I've just drawn a right-angled triangle. Does it matter which way I draw it? Because I could draw a right-angled no, triangle not. in various... I could draw another one there, though it's a different one. And I can draw this one over so here. Pythagoras will... there we yeah, go. Pythagoras' theorem will work however you draw your right-angled triangle. As long as it has a right angle in it, yeah. then Pythagoras' theorem is going to work. This. Yes. And I can, yeah. I can remember now, as it's all coming flooding back to me, that... the. The right angle triangle has a 90 degree angle, doesn't it? So I put that there as a little square, 90 degrees. Yep. Um, and it, it's used in, in various places in real life. So, for example, um, this is kind of a convoluted scenario, but like, imagine your, your cat is stuck up the top of the tree and you've got to put a ladder up to the tree. Uh, well, the ladder and the floor and the tree would kind of form a right angle triangle. Right. So if you say you knew the, length of the ladder, and we'll, we'll do an example like this in a second, if you know the length of the ladder and you know the height of the tree, then you could work out the third side of that right angle triangle, like how far you have to put the bottom of the ladder yes. um, from the bottom of the tree. Oh, okay. Um, so that's, um, and, and there's other scenarios. Like I'm, I'm about to do some building work in my house um, and ask the architect to send me the 3D model so I could do some playing. Uh, and you know when you hear like, oh, I've got a 50 inch screen TV. Yeah. That's actually the diagonal of the screen. It's right. not the sort of horizontal width. And because like widescreen is like in the ratio 16 to nine, if you've seen that before, you could actually work out what the width of the TV is by using that ratio and using the diagonal of the screen. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Or even like, yeah, and even I was on my way to work and I was thinking, well, okay, I've got to cross the road, but what if I sort of, rather than cross directly and then sort of turn left to go on my way to school, what if I, it was safe to cross the road, what if I just cut across at 45 degrees? Mm. Uh, how much time would that save? Um, and it turns out to be um, 29% uh, time saving. <laughs> Obviously a very small time saving, but um, if you're a busy person, 29% yeah, uh, time saving cross does, does help. Every little um, helps. Also, and, um, I mean, it's also great to be able to work those kinds of things out because it keeps, I mean, we talk a lot about keeping your mind kind of alert. It's a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just to say about the history, I'm not going to bore you, but the history of Pythagoras, it, it wasn't actually Pythagoras who who discovered it was actually the Babylonians over a thousand years before that. And there's actually tablets, which I think is somewhere in America from the Babylonian era, era where they actually, um, you can see that they understood um, some stuff about Pythagoras theorem, even though it wasn't right. named yet. So when, so when cool. Pythagoras discovered it or decided to, to come up with the theory uh, or the theorem, which would, which would now last all, all of these years later, centuries later, I mean, what was, what yeah. was the use of it to him? Um, I, I can't remember the exact context he'd, he'd use it, but to be honest, it, it comes everywhere in maths. Like if you want to find the distance between two longitude latitude points, you yeah. need to use Pythagoras. Um, and like, for example, when you do mechanics, like looking at movement and stuff, mm. um, like there's 
people who do GCC physics will know the un there's a difference between like velocity and speed, where like the speed of a car like might be, I don't know, 50 miles per hour, but the velocity also takes into account its direction. And Pythagoras will allow you to sort of convert between uh, those two forms. So right. it's used everywhere. And Pythagoras would have used it in a variety of different cases. He did a lot of stuff to do with geometry. So um, undoubtedly, he would have used a lot of Pythagoras, yes. um, which is well, not surprising. He is Pythagoras. So you would expect him to use Pythagoras. <laughs> yes. And, and what sort of a guy was Pythagoras? Do we know much about him? Uh, he was also, I'm, I'm, I'm not a historian, but uh, he was also a philosopher as well. So, uh, and the philosopher did a lot in terms of philosophy of mathematics. So mm. he's a sort of a free thinker as well as a, as a mathematician. Right. Uh, sounds like a great guy. To well, I mean, fascinating. Uh, all of these kind of characters to me are, are fascinating, like Archimedes and his bath and the fact that he travelled from Greece to Sicily and, and kind of hung out over there. It's quite amazing that these, these people kind of invented these ideas because it's a great thing to yeah. invent an idea and to have your name all over it for the rest of time. I mean, you know, it must be fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so what are we going to do? Here, uh, yeah, yeah. I've got this cat example. Are you able to see me, by the way? I can see you. Yeah. So I've got this example here and we've got the cat up at the top of the tree and we've got this triangle triangle and we've got the distance of my ladder from the bottom of the tree is three meters. Yeah. And the height of the tree is four meters. Right. And I want to work out the length of that ladder, which you can see that's the longest side of this triangle triangle. That's the hypotenuse. We yes. Call it. Okay. Um, we need to work out that length of the ladder. Mm. Um, now you can see I've written this uh, theorem here. We've got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Sorry, yeah. it's kind of folding over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what that basically that means. Yeah. And I'll explain it. Don't worry. Go on. Um, so it basically means that if you take uh, each of the shorter sides of the triangle yes. and you square them, so the shorter sides are a and b. The shorter, sorry, it's hard to point when it's in reverse. Um, the shorter sides are A and B of this triangle. Now, if you were to square each of them and then add them together, that's going to give you the longest side squared right. of the triangle. And is the longest side yeah. always the horizontal, the, the, the diagonal? Is that always the longest? Uh, yeah, well, it depends how you draw it. As you said, you could draw it in any angle. But the, the, the longest side is always opposite the right angle. That's a really easy way to identify it. Oh, right, so okay. I, I can see the, thing there. the one that's opposite your right angle. That's the hypotenuse, the longest side. So that's so, going yeah. to be the C. OK. Yeah. Yeah, got it. That's C. OK. So we need to now use these sides we've got. We can see the shorter sides, the A and the B, we've got three and we've got four there. Yeah. You can see that? Yes. Um, and we've now got to work out this final side. Um, this is the C here. Yeah. Right. So if we plug these sides into the formula. Let's say the A, one of the shorter sides is three. Yeah. And the B, the other shorter side of my triangle, that's the height of the tree is four. Yeah. If you so put that's, that into formula, so that's nine plus 16, right? Because it's, it's squared. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So if you do nine plus 16, what do you get? I get 25. Yeah. So the 25 must be equal to that C squared you've got on the other side of the formula. Yes. So the hypotenuse is 25. I, I know, C squared. The hypotenuse squared is 25. So therefore, if the hypotenuse oh, squared sorry, yeah. is 25, then what is the hypotenuse? Oh, so it's 5, isn't it? It is, yeah, because 5 squared is 25. Yeah. And that means, well done, you successfully worked out that the length of the ladder, that hypotenuse of the triangle, is uh, 5 metres. Right. Now, I haven't got a ladder that's five metres. What do I do now? Do I have to go and buy one? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but popped out to B and Q and say, listen, I need a hypotenuse ladder, which is five metres long. <laughs> Excellent. That's right. Well, that was very, well, that was very yeah. well explained, Jamie, I must say, because one of the things that, that I think everybody remembers from their time at school uh, is the, the teachers that were somehow able to communicate better than the ones who couldn't were the, the subjects that you remembered the best and the subjects that you learned the most mm. from, you know? And you've got a very um, very nice manner about you. I don't wish to, I'm not trying to be patronising, but you've got a very good okay. teaching manner. And you do an online learning platform, right, um, called drfrostmaths.com? That's right, yeah. And it's, it's since lockdown, it's got incredibly busy. It's mm. about 1.2 hits a day. Wow. Um, and I've had to move server and everything just to kind of um, accommodate the demand. It's, it's, it's been absolutely crazy. Yes, brilliant. Well, listen, thank you so much for, for taking the time to do that. Uh, it's, it's, it's brought back a few memories of my uh, Catholic grammar school, which was run by monks 
and uh, brothers of some kind, which was, uh, you know, sometimes good and sometimes not so good. But thank you very much indeed. Dr. Jamie Frost, maths teacher, finalist for the Global Teacher Prize 2020. Get my vote for sure. And I'm going to about give myself a mark here, as is what you do as you're a teacher. Uh, I've given myself 10 out of 10. Thank you very much indeed.